Carolina had continued, we would be the United States of Carolina rather than the United States of America as far as country. Okay? Now, by, don't you wish that had happened? Uh, okay, population, uh, we're jumping from 1660s all the way up in the early 18th century. And that just gives you a comparison of what was happening uh, in the population at that time. And you can see the contrast with South Carolina. South Carolina was becoming a uh, slave, large plantation, and we, we remained fairly middling, uh, small farms, small plantations. We did have slave labor and indentured labor, indentured labor or contract labor, but, uh, and you see at that time our population was on par with, with South Carolina's. And we had developed into North Carolina and South Carolina by the time our friend Blackbeard showed up on the shores. Um, okay. Now, the period we're talking about is the Queen Anne's War period. And Queen Anne had come into uh, in 1702, and there was a war almost that entire period. It's a European war, but we call it Queen Anne's War here. It was a dynastic war in Europe. And Blackbeard was a privateer in Queen Anne's War. So he's serving the crown. Um, privateers were licensed, in effect, licensed pirates, legal pirates during time of war. They could attack enemy shipping. Pirates came from when the war ended, and what are you going to do? You can't retire, and you've got a good living during the war, and so you just keep on. And then they start attacking your own country's shipping, and that gets you into trouble with your own people. If you're attacking the Spanish or the French, that's all right. You keep doing that, but it's when you start taking on the English, which they will eventually do. Let me say that there was a period from about 1680s into the early 70s, early 18th century, which is you know, war, peace, brief pieces, war, peace, war, peace. It was a, most of those people have known war most of their time, a lot of time. Okay? And this is the type of, this is what we're talking about. The privateers used sloops, or in this case, Schooner, but small vessels, they're fast, they can outrun just about anybody. They want to outrun their prey and they want to be able to outrun the warships when they come after them. And this is a merchant ship over here. This is your typical scene in the period. Now, if this was a privateer, he would be flying the Union Jack. Uh, but he's already turned pirate. Okay? Now, pirates started out as buccaneers in Tortuga, just off the north coast of Haiti. They then moved from there to Port Royal, which became the pirate capital, the buccaneer capital in the 17th century. And then an uh, earthquake in 1692 sunk about half that city. Spanish had been praying for that, and it was <laughs> um, And then from there they moved to Nassau and the Bahamas. The Bahamas at that time was also controlled by the Royal Survivors of Carolina. So in effect it was an offshore branch of Carolina that's not generally known. And of course up here is the Carolinas and Virginia. And you see what the pirates want is in Virginia and Charlestown. That's where the trade is. North Carolina with our dangerous coast is a good place to hide out. Okay. And of course this is what happens to pirate treasure. People ask me about pirate treasure. Well that's where it goes. <laughs> they don't bury it. They spend it as soon as they can. And so you see where who leaves with the power of trade. I get more comments about power of trade, and that's my answer. There was no power of trade. Okay. Well, we know where it was anyway. All right, 1718, that's our day, all right? The war ended in 1714. The privateers turned over to pirates. They set up in Nassau. That was the pirate capital now. And uh, they begin attacking English ships, and finally the British should have enough. And they will send to Nassau Woods Rogers, who was a noted mariner. He had sailed around the world, had been a privateer several times. He knew the business. And so he was sent with some more ships, became governor of the Bahamas, and with him uh, uh, was Christopher Gale, who had been Chief Justice of North Carolina, and he came to the Bahamas and briefly was Chief Justice of the Bahamas. And so he personally knew a lot of pirates. And this is a portrait painted of him in 1719 in Charlestown, North Carolina. Okay? Now, at the time, in 1718, North Carolina had four towns. Town Queen Anne's Creek, which became Edenton, Bath, the first town, Newburn, the second town, Bogart, the third, and this was the fourth. 
And then Upper Coke Inland was the main entrance into the colony. That was our best inlet. It was used by all shipping coming into the colony by this time. So now we get to our man Edward Thatch. Thatch, please note that. Not teach. All the documents in North Carolina, probably with one or two exceptions, he's called Edward Thatch. Now, is that his name? We don't know. Because people who look for Thatch, they look for Teach, they look in all the places he's supposed to have come from, Bristol, uh, Jamaica, you know, all kinds of things, can't find him anywhere. So he's a total man of mystery. He came out of nowhere like a comet, blazed across the colonies in 1718, and then is killed here. Back, back, now. Uh, right here, you see that lion head sword palm? You will see that in the museum in Boca. It's not the actual one, but here he is being depicted at the time with exactly what we found on QAR, which obviously means it's a common sword or available to be at the time. And his sidekick was Major Steve Mine, Barbados plan of the gentleman pirate, and so they are cooperating with each other. Okay? Now this is my favorite portrait of Blackbeard, done in 1724. All these are made up, of course. They're just there was a physical description. But can you imagine sailing in the Caribbean wearing a Cossack fur hat? <laughs> That's got to be real. I mean, who wouldn't think that up at the time? Um, but it's a typical portrait of him, and that's the one I like the best. Okay? By Beard encountered a French slaver, La Concorde, and you probably know this story, it's well known now, in 1770, in the fall of 1770, about November, and we'll equip it with 40 guns, rename it Queen Anne's Revenge. A lot of people ask about that. Well, he served Queen Anne in the Queen Anne's War as a privateer. And now uh, they have the Hanoverians, George the first and second, well, George the first in 1718. Uh, a lot of people objected to the Hanoverians and they're still supporting the Stuart idea. So Queen Anne's Revenge attacking Britain, Hanoverian Britain now. So we'll sail around the Caribbean. And by this time, he had taken nearly 40 prizes. And then they move up on the North American mainland and blockade Charlestown, South Carolina. And it was a wall city, one of the few in North America at that time. And they will capture about nine ships in a week, take about 1,500 pounds in cash, take hostages, and the ransom for the hostages was a chest of medicine worth about 400 pounds. A lot of people anything. Why medicine? Well, the, the medicine chest on the ship was depleted, and there had been a lot of sickness on that slave ship, and so uh, they also had taken two of the surgeons, the French surgeons, against their will on the voyage. Okay? From there, they moved up the coast to uh, Beaufort, or Topsail, England, it was called at that time, and ran aground on the shoal, and I'm one of the few, I think, who still think that uh, but maybe not intentional. Uh, in a trial in Charleston after this, some of the pirates were claiming it was intentional. Blackbeard was the supreme opportunist. And whether it was intentional or not, he certainly figured out what to do with the situation after he was in it. I do not believe he'd ever been to this end, but I know people here in Boca think he'd been in and out of this place how many times prior to 1718. There was no evidence of that. He was ever in North Carolina prior to day in June that he ran around here. Okay. The ship we know from the archaeological record listed and, and collapsed over on the port side, okay. lower and under, and of the some three to four hundred pirates we can account for about 150. So there are about 200 pirates that go missing in Beaufort, North Carolina in 1718. There are a few stories about them showing up in Philadelphia and Virginia. Well, we go to Virginia because there were hanging pirates there. There were hanging pirates everywhere. So why leave? But let me just say this about North Carolina. North Carolina had come off the worst disaster in its history, the Tuscarora War. At one point, they described some 300 widows and orphans in Bath, who refugees in Bath. And so guess what? Here in 1718, there are a lot of single women with families who have burned out farms and houses 
And now you've got some 200 men, healthy, well, most of them probably, um, <laughs> men at arms. And the, camp, the colony needed protection. And so, in a way, you could say the governor is saying, you reform, you take the part, you quit, become a law abiding citizen. We need, you, we need you, we need you as a fighting man in this colony. And so there's a need in this colony for these men, and I can't prove any of it yet. But all I know is over the years, many, many people came up and said, oh, I'm sending to Blackbeard. And I don't know ever answer that question. But I began thinking, no, they're not just sending to Blackbeard. That would be impossible. They're just sending from a pirate. And all of a sudden, you start thinking about several hundred pirates here. A lot of people in Eastern North Carolina are sending to Blackbeard. Um, Blackbeard sets up, he goes to Bath, takes the pardon. They were, the king was offering a pardon as a carrot and stick. You take the pardon in a certain period of time, and if you don't quit, then they're coming after you. So many, many pirates took the pardon, and many, many pirates were executed. So he goes here briefly, takes the pardon, supposedly marries a local girl, and he probably did, and then goes down and sets up at Okokin, the entrance to the colony. He controls the entrance to the colony. At a place called, guess what? Thatches Hole. There it is on the 1733 map. Edward Mosley's map, and Mosley knew like that. And we call it Teaches Hole today. Maybe it'll be Thatches Hole someday. Okay? Alexander Spots World was just going into a frenzy in Virginia. He was frightened that they were going to start raiding the Chesapeake, and he had a reason to be frightened. Uh, and so he set up a preemptive invasion of North Carolina with uh, Marines and naval, for uh, naval forces of the uh, uh, Royal Navy. And they go down to Thatcher's Hole, Lieutenant Maynard's group, and another group came over land, so it was, a, it was actually an amphibious operation. This is the way it looks today, folks. It looks today the way it did 300 years ago. And it is preserved. And if you walk in that maritime forest over there, I mean, every time I go in there, I just think, okay, that's about as close as I'm going to get, except diving out there, and I did do that too. Um, that you can get very close to it there. Okay. And on November 22nd, um, in the battle, Blackbeard was killed. Um, and they took his head, nothing vicious about that. They, they had over 100 pounds waiting for them in Virginia, and that's proof that he's dead. It was dead, dead, dead or alive. Um, that was a ferocious battle. It lasted just a few minutes, but the pirates suffered 100% casualties. All of them were either killed or wounded, and the, uh, the English suffered about 50% casualties. It was very, very bloody in a pretty little skirmish, you might say. Right? 1996, quickly. Okay. Uh, that's the way it looked a long time ago, about 10, 15 years ago, but some of this is still there. Um, I think this anchor is the one. Is this, which one has come up more? This one or well, that one? Okay, that one. This one's still there, that one's still there. And some of the cannon, and I understand we're gonna, we're gonna actually see three. That's already been told to three. Yeah, okay. three are coming up today, okay? Um, and that's what we'll be seeing. This is one of the best. The archaeologist says it's Queen Andrew Vange. Doesn't say it literally, but Everything fits pre-1718. We found a lot of material deep in the wreck that was 1740. We've got something else. Okay. But we haven't. We found some golf balls, a few things like that. <laughs> they don't count. Fishing a lot of fishing works. All right, so here's what we got. Three mass, 90 feet, two to three hundred tons. And I think the current count is 29. Is that right, sir? Not 27? Okay, I'm sorry, I had 27, and I changed it. I probably had a few more. Okay. okay. All right. Now, my, my job was a history. I did work on the rack, but my job was to get to the records, and I wanted to just show you there's a lot of people saying, you don't know what that is. That could be anything. Well, the only record we have of any ships in that period would be Queen Anne's Revenge and Adventure, the two pirate ships. I went to the Charlestown records, Charleston, South Carolina records, and here are the three years. Fortunately, we have the entry and clearing for the port for those three years. Only one vessel of that size came to Charlestown those two years and zero in 1719. That's a deep water port. 
I assure you, Beaufort was not. And in fact, that's one reason Queen Andrew Manning ran around. So only one ship visiting the most important people of port on this coast. It tells you a ship of that size is not normal. Okay? And the second part of it was the armament. Now, unfortunately, we don't have records on armament going back past 1722. Actually, that's 1718. But this is a similar period. It's a period of peace. The largest ship to come into Charleston, 180 times 10 guns, 140 times 11 guns, 120 10 guns at sea, 30 to 40 guns? No. Not normal in this area. So the, the history, buttress, and the archaeology that this is what it is. And until someone else can find proof of something else like that in this area, then I think we're, we're there. And so by 2007, we announced to the world that yes, we're convinced that this is it. So if you have questions about it, uh, we don't. Okay? And so we have, and by the way, I love this. This is Queen, Anne's, Queen Anne on Queen Anne Japan. This is a coin weight. It's not a coin, it's a coin weight, but there she is. Okay? And that's it. Thank you.